I'm Stumpy Nubs, and today we're going to talk about three essential hand planes for power tool woodworkers and which versions you should buy. A lot of today's woodworkers think hand planes are an archaic tool of the past. Who needs them? We got power. But what they fail to understand is that a hand plane can be faster, more accurate, and more enjoyable to use than a power tool for many applications. Every woodworker should have at least three planes. A block plane, a jack plane, and a smoothing plane. Of course, I could make the case for several others, but these three types are the essentials. Let's take a look at them one at a time. The block plane is usually the first hand plane a woodworker buys, mostly because they're easy to find at yard sales and flea markets, and they're pretty inexpensive. They're also the most useful hand plane for a person that works primarily with power tools. A block plane can be used to trim plugs flush with the surface, to finish dovetails and finger joints, to chamfer the edge on a workpiece, or to trim it for a perfect fit. It can even be used as a smoother to produce a finished surface. A block plane is easy to use and much faster to set up than any power tool. Once you realize what it can do, it won't be long before you find yourself reaching for block planes more than just about any other tool in the shop. Block planes come in many shapes and styles, so which one should you own? I actually prefer to have two of them, a standard version for rough work and a low angled version for finer work. If I had to choose just one, I'd probably go with the low angled version because it will do everything that a standard block plane will, plus the lower bed angle is much better for tackling end grain. But low angle block planes are much more difficult to find at your local flea market. So you may be better off getting a standard block version and then picking up a low angle one when you get the opportunity. Like I said, it doesn't hurt to have two. Stanley made a lot of block planes and the numbering system was all over the place. The 9.5 was a popular one, as was the number 18 and the number 60.5 and, and a dozen other models. Rather than buying based on number, find one that fits your hand well. Some were larger than others and overall shapes made certain versions more desirable to certain people. A couple of features that I would insist upon though are a threaded adjuster, whether it be one that's parallel to the sole like this one or perpendicular to the sole like the other one, and an adjustable mouth, which allows you to open and close it based on the thickness of the shaving or the type of the grain that you're working. Stanley's used block planes are pretty cheap and abundant. There's no reason to settle for one that doesn't suit your needs or that's damaged in any way. You can afford to be choosy. The second plane every woodworker should have is a number five jack plane like this Stanley. Some say that these are called jack planes because they're like a jack of all trades and that they'll do a little bit of everything. They can be set up with different iron angles and profiles for aggressive stock removal or for fine smoothing. They're particularly useful in a shop that doesn't have a power jointer. You can use a jack plane to prepare the edges of boards before you glue up wide panels or to knock down high spots on rough stock that's twist or cupped before you feed it through a power planer. They're also very useful for flattening very short stock quickly that can't be safely fed through a planer. Like block planes, jack planes come in standard and low angle models. The low angle versions, like this Stanley number 62, are the most versatile because they perform better on all sorts of materials and grain, and they have the added advantage of easily interchangeable irons that can quickly transform it from a rough scrub to a fine smoother or a tooth scraper and so on. But vintage low angle Stanleys are very rare and very expensive, and even new models will cost you between $200 and $300. Fortunately, Stanley seems to have made one number five standard jack plane for every man, woman, child, and shop dog in the world. You'll find them at any flea market or antique store that's worth visiting. They're very inexpensive, so don't waste your time with any that aren't in good condition, with one exception. After you do find a good one, I recommend picking up one that's maybe kind of on the junky side just to salvage the iron for a couple bucks. Because then you can have one iron for fine work and a second one that can be ground to a slight camber and swapped into your plane for rough work. The third plane every woodworker should have is the smoothing plane. I rate this at number three because you can smooth with a block plane and a jack plane, but a dedicated smoother that's always kept very sharp and set to a very fine cut will save you hours of sanding. That's where smoothing planes really shine, and it's a shame that modern woodworkers have forgotten that a 
freshly planed surface not only looks better under most finishes, but it can be achieved without all the dust and the noise. And let me tell you, hand planing is sure a lot more enjoyable than sanding. Besides, when you're hand plane your surfaces, you keep them flat and your edges crisp, which is something that can be a problem with sanding, especially if you get careless, like we all do, because we hate sanding so much. I'm not telling you that a smoother will completely replace your sander, but if you train yourself to reach for it first, you'll cut your sanding time to a bare minimum. There are a lot of good used smoothing planes out there, but the Stanley number no. 3 and the number no. 4 are the most common models. Neither are at all rare, but you're going to find more number no. 4s than number no. 3s. That's because the number no. 4 just fits the average hand better, and many people feel that its greater width is more suited to typical furniture parts. Personally, I go back and forth between the compact size of the number no. 3 and the roomy toad of the number no. 4. Since they're so inexpensive, you could just buy one of each. But at the very least, you should hold one in each hand and decide for yourself which is the better fit. If you have really giant mitts, you might go with Stanley's 4.5, but those are a bit more expensive and difficult to find. Many woodworkers are trained to reach for a power tool for nearly every task. Incorporating these hand planes into your workflow will take some time and effort. You'll have to learn how to use them. You'll definitely have to learn how to properly sharpen them. But once you do, you'll be glad you did. They'll save you time, they'll improve the quality of your work, and they'll make the whole process that much more enjoyable. Be sure to look for more videos and articles in Stumpy Nub's Woodworking Journal to help you along the way, and we'll see you next time.